Hello everyone and welcome back to the second video in this Create Mod tutorial series for 1.20.1. Now this one is going to be about the various different methods of item transportation. So let's immediately jump right into the crafting recipes. A very useful block for holding items and a temporary storage is the depot, which takes one andesite alloy and one andesite casing. And if I go over here, you can see, or it's not the best example, but yes, if we look there, it will be on the ice, on the depot, throwing two at once. Doesn't work, although you can hold up to an entire stack of items on there at any given time. So that you can craft like so. It is a shapeless crafting recipe, but that's just the way I normally do it. And there is the full block. Alright, so let's remove that. And next thing we move on to are the belts. These things need six dried kelp, which if you've played Minecraft since 1.13, you'll probably know you can get from smelting regular kelp. You can also use it in a campfire. Or, with this mod, there is another method which I will uh, demonstrate probably next episode. So that, you can make one mechanical belt with six dried kelp. And you do need a bunch of shafts, and then you place them there. The belt shows you where it's going to go. You can place them horizontally, or vertically like that. And you can also put additional shafts inside the belts to serve extra points of contact. And right clicking on there will remove one end of it. You can also make it longer if you have another belt and click on it. Although I'm not sure if that works without consuming a belt. Anyway, as you can see here, it is moving you along. It also moves items along. You have a right click to get them off that section of the belt. The way this works is it is essentially an animated texture. Like the depot, it holds an item. However, it updates the location of the item by moving the visual representation of it. It's basically just a single stack item holder. As you can see, you can put a bunch of items on there. Anyway, next we move to the funnel. Now this is an underside one, there is another variant, although that will be covered in a later video. You craft it. This is a shaped recipe, so you need the alloy on the top and then the dried kelp. And you get two, which you can place on the floor. Shift clicking attaches them into the thing you're looking at. Clicking on the outside of a container makes it facing outwards. You don't have shift click to place them on containers. And what they do is they will take items out of a container and put them out like that. Let me put this here, that's facing in. You can also switch the direction it's facing in. Put that on there and it drops. But if we put eight in there, we should end up four on each. So four. They will also. Okay, it looks like it's only taking one out of the underside. Yeah. The underside funnels will take one out at a time. And they will also not drop an item if there's one already there to prevent you losing loads of stuff if it's they're not being picked up properly. Anyway, if we reverse the direction of this Oh, don't do that now. If we look in this chest and put items there, they go into the hopper. And then you can see the hopper does move one item at a time onto the depot. Now if we flick the direction of that funnel and do this, they're going onto the depot and they're being taken off into the chest. I believe the funnel does run slightly slower than the hopper. Let me put them all in here. Yeah, the hopper does get more of the time. Anyway. If we put items in here, you'll see a hopper can also place items onto a belt. And at this end, the funnel looks slightly different. There's a 
I don't think that changes. No, that just makes it more of a full block. So that's attack then appearance change. Either way, if a funnel is going, or if any sort of item movement is going into a chest, like this belt, and a funnel's placed on it, it will take those items out. Whereas over here, because there's a stationary item transportation, the item, the funnel, is sucking the items into the chest as opposed to having them pushed in. Now, the build works in other ways. As you see, you can make it go diagonally, and this ultimately does not change the way it works. You can have two separate ones there. And then we just have a couple of chain drives, which I believe I showed the crossing recipe for, maybe not. That'll probably be the latest thing as well. And then we have these things, and then this up here, which I will demonstrate. So this, you may notice, it looks like two of the final recipe. And that's because this is a tunnel. Yeah, they changed the one letter. Fortunately, it was already a word. Again, shaped recipe. Again, you get two. These you can't place on their own. You have to place them on a belt or something. And they do nothing on their own. They're just used for decoration. If you put like three in a row, then you can get the chain thing in the middle. However, once we have a belt taking items out, it changes to look like this. Now, if I were to throw an item on there, it comes out this end. If I throw a bunch of items on there, one at a time, they still will come out this end. Okay, I guess that was a backlog issue or something. Anyway, you'll notice one of the items came out of this end. If I throw four of them on at once, then we get one out here, and three out there. Then we throw eight on, you'll notice we still only get one out here. That's because the andesite tunnel, when it has an output, it will take one item off the stack. No matter how much, you could have two items, or you could have 64 items. Either way, it'll just take one off the stack and send the rest out this way. I mean, I could have multiple belts going out here. If I just have two belts, I can place them. Then we get two there. Now I throw a stack of three items on. Then we'll get one out of each of these. However, the useful thing, well, these kind of just do that. If we look, where did that? Oh, I placed it. That's what it's gone. If we look over here, we have two more interesting things. We have those, which I showed earlier, and this, which I have already cut out of the video two times at this point, because I've accidentally activated it. And what does that do? Oh, okay. So you can... You may guess from what it's saying there, the objective stack size. This is probably just to control the number of things that are launched. If we look here, you can see gold sheet which you get from crushing a golden got a depot which we made over here with the andesite alloy and the andesite casing and a small cog wheel and we get a weighted ejector now this is a funny little thing which i will demonstrate shortly we also have this which is one iron ingot and two iron sheets again shaped recipe and that makes four shoots now these by default they don't have the glass you have to click them with a wrench you can also place them on the side and they go up like that. And that just does stuff, I guess. Anyway, these are useful for controlled downwards item transport. Now, this, it has ejector in the name. As you would guess, it, uh, it throws the items. 
Now the way it works is you have to place it down. And let's uh, shift click here. That's selected the target. I can then place it down. You need to get side power running into it. And then I put down an item on it and it gets through. Now the chutes, they're basically just a better hoppers for downwards transport. It's like, how do I throw all the items on here again? Let's go. Yeah, let's try the chocolate pods I have. Okay. You can see them better. Yeah, as you see, those went tumbling down. And it will send the entire stack in one go. They're basically just faster hoppers for yeah. Now if I take a look at this and set the ejected stack size to four, I think what that does is I threw one, two, three. Well, as soon as there's a fourth one on there, it throws it. So that you can use to control how many things it throws. Now, the bit that I had to edit out of the video twice already. It can also be used to launch mobs. Including the player. So if I were to put this here. That is not what I intended to do. There we go, it launches the pig. And uh, I wonder how that will work with the... Okay, it doesn't subtract the items, cool. So anyway, that is most of the andesite level things. So to recap, we have the depot, which you put items on, the funnel, which takes items off things or puts items on things, depending on which way around you have it facing which also runs slightly slower than the hopper. We have the belt, which moves everything, including pigs and you. It can move up to one stack of items at a time, which the funnel can then take items off when it has the belt moving into it. The belt can also go up and down, and you can also, if I put like one there and one there or something, you can put it vertically, and this is useful for if you want to make a thing go straight up but don't want to use gearboxes or something. Uh, also, if you're holding shift on belts, it doesn't move you. I don't think it does the same with the weighted ejectors. Uh, you have the tunnels, which can be used to filter off one item at a time, or just for decoration purposes. You have the weighted ejectors, which don't launch you when you're holding shift, nice to know. And then you have the chutes, which will take all of your items and drop them down. And you can make them look cool by clicking them with a wrench. So that is everything in this video. If you are looking forward for more, make sure to click that like button. Sorry about the delayed upload, this is probably going to be two weeks after the previous one. I'm going to try and make them weekly, although no promises I'm afraid. And the next video will be about various processing systems. We've already seen the crushing, or crushing, the mechanical press, and some uses of the mixer. But this will demonstrate them all. Oh, that's because it was crushing from the millstone. Anyway, next episode will be processing. Episode after will probably be an introduction. Well, all I'm going to say is processing next episode. So episode three is going to be processing. Episode five will be more methods of getting power. So honestly, water wheels, they can serve all of your needs early game, including drowning you. But yeah. Fifth episode will be more methods of power. The fourth one I will keep secret until either the end of next episode or just when we get around to it. So, uh, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time. Goodbye! <laughs>